<laughs> hey, what's up, man? I'm Rashad, Tony. We are the I Talking You So podcast, our inaugural episode. We do have some old backlog from the last when, Matter of fact, I only did the first season by myself, which I was very surprised. Really? Yeah, I watched really? all of them. Yeah, I watched all of them as a recap, and it was just me by myself. You know why? Because we were doing House of the Dragon at the same time, too. So okay. that's what yeah. happened. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. so... If you want to go back and get a recap of the first season with me on a solo set, doing the best I can what I had. Definitely <laughs> on everything, especially if you're on YouTube, everything is on the playlist. If you're on like anything else, I'm sorry, you're going to have to search in 2022 because there's no way of indexing that stuff when you use right. Spotify for podcasters. As I try to explain to somebody online and they got upset. But anyway, <laughs> want to talk about The Rings of Power Season 2 Amazon gave us three episodes and all of them were like almost an hour long. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like the first one was like an hour and change. Mm-hmm. And then we got like 55 and then like another like an hour or so. So yeah, it's a lot of a lot of television he's watching. All spoilers, of course, gotta talk about the thing to talk about the thing. And okay, so Tony, I've been <laughs> on I've been on threads a lot. You know what I'm saying? Like uh-huh. I just posted something real quick when they was like, yo, who watching Rings of Power, no, your Rings of Power season two. And I got like mad feedback. Like, oh, yeah, we watched it. Bro, okay. I think I like almost that 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 little question post got like 10,000 views. So I'm like, oh, OK. I was like, hey, um, John, at the point for the view on threads. <laughs> <laughs> I got to put that in there now, yo, because like, yo, because like, I was yeah. actually getting feedback. People talking and they even posted. So like, how y'all feeling about First three episodes, decent feedback on that as well. It's a lot, yo. It's a lot of people who watch the show and like the show, because if you would yeah. go on the vitriol on the opposite side, the hellscape known as Twitter, you would think yeah. that everybody hates the show, and it's not the case. So like, yeah, yeah, because that that's the way it seemed after the first season. And it seemed it, like everybody were like, "Yo, f this show," blah blah blah, blah or, or on. On the dark, <laughs> the mortar side of social media, which is Twitter, yo, and I was just yo, like, somebody called that. I was like, Bird Chan. I was like, damn, that's funny. I was just like, yo, like, god dang, I guess this, I guess this day gonna um show not gonna last. But Amazon said, yo, f y'all, we gonna still put this day. We got money, we gonna put this out here. So we paid I a mean, billion for this for this properties, and like, and the thing yeah. is, people say, oh, tomorrow was like. Smiley literally said today they should be ashamed of this. This shouldn't even be like a part of the Lord of the Rings. Lord. Yeah, this one's some this this would be decent on its own merit. I'm like, bro, but like it's set in the Lord of the Rings universe. It kinda it kinda has to be it can't stand on its own. <laughs> Cause it doesn't make sense on its I, own. You know I, what I'm saying? I, I get I guess the the toxic fans of Lord of the Rings are going to try to pull a uh, acolyte <laughs> on this show. Nah, and, and they ain't I don't doing think it's going to happen. Yeah, not it ain't going that. for it. They ain't doing it at all. All right, let's 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 get into this. Yeah. Who? What faction do you want to talk about first? Because it's like five or six groups of people, and everybody has like disparate storylines. Matter of fact, let's get to our favorite people first. And that's not yes. Harfoots. <laughs> Yo, like, and, and and the best thing about it, we only get two of them, so that's that's great. And and the Harfoots. It's funny are, that it's funny you say we never talked about this, but I just remember us talking about. Yeah, this. we yeah we talked about it offline so much, but and you yeah. know how much I Yo. hated we, the Yo. heart. We both we hated them, Yo. <laughs> And guess what? Ain't much changed <laughs> either from it or whatever. Nah, the cool thing was like they was with um with um shot out of a rocket Jesus, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fell from heaven, Jesus. Mm-hmm. Common Jesus. And yeah, um Jesus. And, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Common Jesus with him. And he's actually, you know, he's he, he can he can talk now and he's actually uh-huh. making sense. And they're walking mm-hmm. through the desert trying trying to find this um picture you know like <laughs> know the funny thing about like some of these like some of these fantasy shows like Lord of the Rings what's that 
they had nothing to go off. They had like a like like a dream is 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 some paper. You know what I'm saying? And like uh, it's a some big, fire, it's, it, and don't forget the fireflies for the first season. Them too. And that was it. Yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> that was it. Like we need to go that way. What's that uh-huh. way? I don't know, but I gotta I go don't that know. Way. <laughs> and she was like, you know what? I'm gonna go with you. I said, Oh snap, you're gonna go with the creepy old man in the desert. You have fun with that. But anyway, right. so so they're in the desert and they're walking and they're like essentially going around in circles. You know what I'm saying? It's 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 very um this should be a 40 day trek but it may turn into much longer it's a whole lot of biblical vibes going on yes very uh <laughs> very, very in the Hebrew-ish. in the wilderness uh, you know the what I'm ex- saying? very very the exodus it's mm-hmm. going on yeah, right yeah, now he's looking very you know? very moses like with like, <laughs> with 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 this one israelite so it's it's and, and, yeah. and, and he's having visions of a cane of a wooden stick too which yeah, which is again is an, is is another yeah yes mm-hmm. yeah yeah ain't no red seat apart but definitely it's a lot of biblical references in that in that first with with the um with the stranger so yeah and and they're ha- and they're having this conversation and he's like yo I'm pretty sure someone's following us and somebody is following them. And this is like this this mass dude in this crazy mass, just like kind of like on the low, just kind of tracking them the whole time. And um, and it gets to the point where they stop and they was like, yo, somebody is watching us. And look who it is. It's our other favorite little hobbit friend. I'm sorry, Harford friend. No disrespect to the hobbits. And um, and what what's what's this girl's name? Poppy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The one so- that's following them is Poppy and the 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 main. You know, hard for is I believe Nori. Yeah, yeah. So, so Nori and Poppy is like, because remember, yo, Poppy ain't got no family. So, like, (laughs) which is another reason we hate the Harfords because, okay, real quick, family got left (laughs) behind. They had a thing. The Har the Harfords had a thing where, like, hey, if you can't keep up, screw you, because they basically like migrated. If you couldn't keep up, screw you. Hey, whatever, we move it on. And 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 that's what happened to Poppy fam. And like they every time they get to a new location, you know, they call it a a, a, a night of remembrance. And they're just reading off all the, the people and the families that they've left behind. And, and and I remember they did it and they was like named her family, and she's just sitting there like, hmm, or whatever. And you know, it was about to happen to Nori's family. Remember, her father had broke his leg or something yeah, yeah. like that. But luckily, um, the stranger helped them out to um to keep up so they can make it to their next location, which they said they're gonna probably stay there for a while, man. But the Harfoots are so trash. Not y'all supposed to be migrants helping people. Y'all like like no one really know who the hell y'all are because y'all y'all hide y'all selves and instead of like kind of keep population going, y'all hide. oh oh Rashad got left behind him and his family. Hey man, <laughs> it's what it is. Y'all know y'all know yeah. the rules. You know what I'm saying? Like right. yeah. So so that was very shocking to us. So. Nor is so now it's Nori, it's the stranger, and it's Poppy. And Poppy brings some food and also like the rest of some more maps, I guess. Yeah. Um, because um the 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 elder who passed away the last episode, he had like a whole book of yeah, um of like like you know, yeah, yeah, of like ancient relics or whatever, whatever yeah. MacGuffin that was. So she brought some more than pages. I guess. And, appar- and apparently what it seems like is like, they were like, hey, we're trying to find something, but you know what I'm saying? We don't know how, but when she whips out these maps and stuff and she's like, I have these maps, but I just, they they look, they sound like the looks of the name of these places are familiar, but I'm not sure. But then she was like, wait a minute. I think these are places that the Harfords have gone before. Like, you know, they've basically been all over Middle Earth traveling and come to find out like their little folk songs that they be singing and stuff going along is basically telling the map of every of of, of you know basically transcribing the map map of where they need to go to get these certain places all along this and then they decide they say oh we found it you see the little scene or whatever shot there oh there goes there goes the 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 mountain trees oh there goes the black sand and they finally 
you know, they finally realized they were on the trail. Also, another big part of this, of their story, is that um, the stranger, we know, has magical powers, but he don't know how to control them. And before Poppy came along, like, they were they were starving, and they were like, oh, my God, we got to eat. There's no water or anything like that. And then she looks at a tree, and she remembers last time in the first season where he basically was able to bloom a tree, but his powers got out of control, and the tree exploded and everything like that. And she was telling him, like, hey, why don't you go ahead and make this little dead desert tree do something? And he like, yeah. oh, man, I don't want And she's like, look, man, we ain't got no food. And he says, all right, you got to get back. And he makes her, like, go, like, way far away. And he hits it, and it still blows up. But insects come out, and they have a insect buffet barbecue and having a field day eating, what, like, like scarabs and all this other type of stuff <laughs> or whatever. And the dude, where the dude say he ate one? He said, oh, I feel the legs going down my throat. And she's like, mm, that's just tickling your insights. I said, oh, my God, these I hate these heartfuls things. So, yeah, so that's their MacGuffin. Like, that's their, like, story. And then they finally get to a point on the map where, if I'm not mistaken, Rashad, she's like, yo, we can save time by cutting through this way. Yeah, and it's a and it's like a wasteland desert. Yeah, like uh, I don't he know. It was like know, I'd like, rather not run out of water in a day and die in two days. So <laughs> we're right, gonna go this right. way. And they said we're gonna go right. They said we're gonna go this way, but then they see that the mass people that are following behind them are, if I'm not mis- are agents of another mystical being. Yeah, which yeah, is yeah, like yeah. A dark, a dark wizard. Yeah, if like like the- yeah, like like even in the in the caption, and Luda says, "Evil wizard." You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. oh, like dark yeah. wizard. One like it's it, yeah. it's very very plainly said. Like, yo, this guy is a bad guy. And mm-hmm. that whole scene when um when he basically summoned the um the lady that had like the like had like the um the GI Jane cut from, yeah, from, uh-huh. from last time from last um mm-hmm. last season when I was chasing mm-hmm. them in the dark in the forest like gave like the it was like yo what's up with the moths so the, so the moths was there he opened, she opened them up like the moths come out this crazy mm-hmm. scene she he cuts the palms of her hands blood drips down and then all of a sudden these moths transform into the lady I'm like Okay, this is a yeah. very interesting way of of, get, of like you know teleportation. So, mm-hmm. and she's and he's like, hey, so um, I need to update. You know what I'm saying? He's like, oh yeah, oh we we know where he at. He he's and he still don't even know who he is yet. He's like, look, mm-hmm. I need you to get him before he does understand what he is. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Or who he is, or, or what he can do. And that's the most one of the most intriguing parts for me is like. One, who are these people? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I think he referred to himself as, if I'm not mistaken, if he, if you haven't done this, I'm sorry, this is a spoiler or whatever in the um, token lore. The wizards of this world are called Istari, are called the Istari. Yeah, you know? yeah, so, it, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so that's what, and I if I think, I think I heard him say that, then like he doesn't know he's an Istari or whatever, so you got this going on, and then you got, I guess, what are these humans, the, the mass people that are yeah. like, hey, we can catch them. And he like, yo, like, they couldn't even do it. Damn, y'all mortal tales are gonna do it. They were like, yo, we know how to track them and stuff. And so... And say, look, yo, not even that, but like, if he don't give in, I'm just gonna kill his little friends. I, yeah, right, yeah. You know, so. <laughs> he said, look, yo, yeah. that's what we gonna do. And which leads to like, one of the, the best act, like, one of the, like, the funniest scenes to me is like so they hear them coming right mm-hmm. and it's like yo they start gathering their stuff and yo space jesus turns around and they are gone he's like oh yeah they are hot foots so they hid so fast and, uh-huh. then, and then he's like oh yeah. shoot i got you know you know if i was like it's like you playing hide and go seek like your yeah. friends find like a hide a place really they, quick <laughs> they pulled a bat they put a batman on them that's what they did. They pulled the Batman. Yeah, on yeah, 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 yeah. They, they really did. Man, how you gonna catch? The, how man? How you gonna catch the joke? 
I hate when he does that. That's exactly what they did. Yeah, yeah. Commissioner Gordon was like, man, this bastard. So the um the people they come through and they didn't find them a little bit of tension. And then they say, Look, mm-hmm. I guess we gotta walk through the desert. Cuts in there mm-hmm. walking through the desert. And Common Jesus was not <laughs> he was like, yo, I'm about to be off the count. So he falls out and they looking at him like, yo, I need you to <laughs> get get up, get up, get up, get up. <laughs> get up. So <laughs> so so um um Poppy says, Look, yo, I think I see something in the distance. And Nori's uh, like, what are you talking about? And it's a fountain. Mm-hmm. So they drag him to this fountain. And then I see the flag. I say, yeah, that's the flag of the of the evil people. And uh-huh. then she brings that pail up. Water comes down. And she hooks the thing to the side. And it slips. And all of a sudden, it's a bell on this well. You know what it's I'm like saying? a dinner bell. Come and get it. They I right mean, here, like, y'all. Yeah, I'm like, yo. Like I said, that's definitely not going to work well for them. So... Mm-mm. You know what I'm saying? They 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 splashing water in common Jesus' face. He finally comes to. They have a quick laugh about what's going on. And then, you know what I'm saying? The people with the mask come back. <laughs> and they uh-huh. like, <laughs> and dude was like, hey, who just trying to get some water, yo? He's like, yeah. <laughs> 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 so I shoot arrows at them. <laughs> so they hide behind and and he reacts in a way that basically makes like a as um, as the people in the out west would say, make like a a, a dust devil. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not really like yeah, a tornado. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> so a haboob or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah either, I don't know. Uh-huh. Either way, like they 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 get caught up in it. But now it's actually uh-huh. like a little like a little category one tornado at this point. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, because yeah. <laughs> uh, one straight up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. Nori and 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 Poppy are like. Hold it on like a dag on cartoon. <laughs> yo, and like and he again, and she was like, Yo, Poppy's like, Man, is he gonna stop? And I was like, Man, you don't know how. <laughs> so, so he's looking like, Yo, I, I know how they play, they're playing this to be like, like, he's okay. Sometimes they have him being semi intelligent. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. he's like, but then, but when he goes into his state of just being like, you know, kind of dumbfounded about stuff, he really uh-huh. acts like Lenny from Mice and Men. <laughs> he's walking like, oh, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna save you guys. And yo, when dumb bastards flew away, I laughed so hard. Yo. Oh, I did too. <laughs> I did too. Like, oh, so I'm like, look, I'm like, Wendy, look, I can, Wendy, I can fly. <laughs> yo, yo, they was gone. That was a let, yo. I said, man, I should laugh that hard. That was yeah. funny to read. So, yeah, that's essentially the Hardfoots um, and the Stranger. The Hardfoots and the Stranger. That's their whole thing for the three episodes. It basically was all episode two. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, who, who you want to talk about next? Um, Let's talk about family problems. The dwarves. Cool. Okay. 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 Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's do that. Okay. So, first time we see the dwarves, you know, um, during the third, during the fourth, and his wife, um, Dessa. And one thing I did notice that they did this season too, as well, is because it was always said that sometimes um, dwarf men and women were indistinguishable because dwarf women had beards too. You yeah. see that they added some. Yeah, yeah, they gave a yeah, she 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 she, 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 she has some pork chops going on. You know what yeah, saying? she got like the pork. She got the, the like the rock from the attitude area area at WWE you know, pork she, chop. She got down. the she got she got the Walt Frazier going on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, you know, she got a little beard thing. So they're like in a a market in Kazadum, you know, so. Casa Doom, the home, you know, of the their branch of the um of the dwarf nation or whatever. And um, you know, she she's out like they're like in that little market and she's shopping for food, and he's like, and and during the fourth, it's like, hey girl, he gone to get this or whatever. And she like, yo, we ain't got the money for this like that. He like, girl, 
I'm the prince, you know, whatever. And she's like, yeah, your father like uh kicked you out. Like y'all, you and your pops are not talking. And basically, family problems. Two stubborn people that aren't talk to each other, especially what happened after last season. The king and his son, and you know, the son wanna I can prove I can do this without you, dad type situation. Yeah, the whole oh, mithril of mining and right, yeah, the mining yeah. of the, the mithril and and you know, sharing it with people or whatever like that. So, you know. They're talking, and then he's like going on a little rant, and that's just like, yo, hold on, because we know she's a mountain singer, and the mountain singers can communicate with the mountains or whatever, and she's like, yo, what the heck? And she gets down, and she feels the vibration, and she's like, everybody, she's like, brace yourself. And he like, what? She said, brace yourself. And everybody else, she's like, I said, brace yourself. And then you see the mountain is starting to cave in. Cave yeah. in on them, and and what we saw, like I said, in the first season, we see it here, is how the dwarves have built a system where they have reflective mirrors coming from the sunlight with holes in the mountain to actually grow and have agriculture inside the mountain, right? you know what I'm saying, with light and stuff. And basically what's happened is um, we saw how Mordor was created last season and basically doing some geology type stuff. Te the tech the technotonic plates are shifting. <laughs> the tectonic plates. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. The tectonic tectonic plates are shifting like it's a DJ. I'm scratching and it's like making the mountain cave in and it's basically like destroyed the mirrors and clip and closed up those holes and, and they're panicking like, oh my God, how are we gonna grow, you know, grow um, you know, food and stuff like that as well. And, in the mountain, and they're trying to figure this out. So you have the king during the third talking like his advisor, and they're like, "Man, I don't. What are we gonna do here? I don't know. We got to try to figure something out." And um, in the process, um, we're gonna talk about in a minute what happens with the elves. They get an invitation from um from Celebron. The elf that created. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kel Kelebrimborn. <laughs> yeah, Kelebrimborn. Like all these names. Yeah, it's nah, that, yo, we're going to be, I'm going to, hey. We're going to be struggling. We're going to be struggling. Yeah, I'm just going to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, Kelebrimborn, who's the, um, who's like the builder and maker, great maker of elf stuff. And he sends a letter, a, a message to them. Hey, I hear about the problems y'all got. Here's an invitation to during the third to come you and you know saying your wife to come see what we got going on what we got going on over here and right here and we can you know say we got going on over here and the reason why um keller brimbro send the um message to during the third is because during the third has a relationship a healthy relationship with the elves especially because of elron because we know traditionally the elves and the dwarves do not like each other and we know that um, during the third's father, I mean, during the fourth's father, hates the elves and don't want them to do it. And he don't understand the relationship that his son has with, you know, what I'm saying this happy friendship or whatever. So, you know, um, during the fourth and and his wife, they go meet with Keller Brimbron and he's like, "Look here, I know y'all got this issue here, but look here, we created, I created this rings of power." Three we gave to the elves. Three I, the elves got, and they were able to, you know, what I'm saying to heal the tree that they had, the the tree, the the tree of light they had that was dying. We could do the same thing with y'all, and we'll give you um what seven rings to go to the the dwarf, the seven dwarf lords, and that could help, you know, heal the mountain. Because in the process before that even happened. Dessa went to go speak with her father-in-law during yeah. the third because her husband's like, I'm not going. And he's like talking, talking to her and she's like, look, you're a mountain singer. You know, y'all are able to communicate with the mountain to find the light, find some light that we can get to shine to help grow things and find out what's wrong with the mountain. And she's like, her and a couple of are like singing their hearts out. Yeah, you hear Yo, it echoing through. It was crazy yeah. hot. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it was crazy. It was wild. It was wild and like singing through, but you know, nothing happened. And he was like, "Yo, this is the first time 
in you know ever that the mountain has never responded back to the singers and i basically guess it is what it is so keller brimbrum is telling um during the fourth hey give you these rings this and that blah blah, blah. and he's like hey keller and, and during the fourth is skeptical like anybody else especially magic rings the hell are you talking about some magic ring man this what you brought me here for for this nonsense and then the process um anatar who um we're going to talk about him in a minute i'm just yeah a little thing is the helper of you know what i'm saying the co-helper of keller Bimber and he's like look here man and he's like look here uh we're trying to help y'all so what you gonna do and then and then of course here comes the standoff that stubborn dwarfism Yo, who the hell are you? He was like, well, who yeah, the hell yeah. are you? And, then, yeah. <laughs> and, and because Keller Brimbron knows who Anatar is, because Anatar, he's like, hey, y'all chill. Like, he's a helper. He knows yeah. how to do this yeah, and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. He's yeah, my yeah. partner. And then they was like, look here. And then that's just sitting there listening. He, she was, he was like, look here. I would invite it's your father, but I know how your father feels about us. I'm talking to y'all, to you especially, because we have a we have rapport and you can go tell your father during the force of hey me and my daddy ain't talking right now and you see like um that's like ah this dude what, shut up hell. would you shut the hell up and then she's like they're talking and then finally he said she she says look they're like so what do you think about the offer because they're like yo we'll give you these rings of power but here's the thing in order for it to really work we need that mithril we need yeah. that mithril to make it to make it all go. And he's like, oh, so y'all just want the mithril. That's what y'all really want. He's like, no, I'm trying to tell you it's gonna really work. And then he, and then Dessa basically is like, hold on. Can you give us some time to talk about this and discuss this? And we'll get back. Anatar's like, hell no, we ain't got no time. Hey, and then, hey, <laughs> hey, hey, even before that, right? And and this is what yeah. sits during off because um because Anatar was like, Hey, like I talked to your what Elron. Elrond said that you was the best elf there was. Like you really know what you're talking about. You're the wisest. You're the wisest. You know what I'm saying? Look, it's like Elrond said. He was like Elrond said, "What that bastard?" uh, So they walk outside, right? Uh And 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 that's 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 like. why so, you acting like that towards him? What's up with the attitude? A jerk? He said, man, you know, Elrond would never say that nice about me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know he a bastard. Like, like, that nigga would never say that about me. <laughs> That's my boy. And I know he would never say that about me. And tell somebody else that. And nah, so. He, he said, nah, son, 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 ain't, son ain't right with this. Son's definitely Right, off. and he was going to keep this all to himself. And Dustin's like, no, nah, no, what you're gonna I mean, do is tell your father about tell this. the king, and, yeah, and, and, and you know, to make this. And then, and then he was like, And if I don't, and she said, and If you don't, I'm gonna tell him. In the meantime, Anatar and them is like, Yo, Anatar's like, Yo, we don't got time to mess with these people like that. You giving them time, and then that's when Keller Brimbron was like, Look here, he says, Even in a cave, a drip takes time and it will break the stone, something to that effect, or whatever. And so what ends up happening is during the third, basically, during the fourth, excuse me, goes back to, um, they go back to Casa Doom and he talks to his father and he basically is like, even though he was right, he had to make it seem like he was wrong. Yeah, he, he, so he, he, he had to apologize. He had to appease. Yeah, he had to appease, yeah, had to apologize and appease his father. So he says, look here, I'm sorry. You were right this and that i just went back into the fold dad was like bet cool he says by the way there may be a way we can help but you gotta give in on something and he explains to him the situation then we see at the end of the third episode where the rings are being made for the um for the dwarves with during the third there at the forge with um with um Keller Brimbron, Anatar, and um, his son, and you see that um, during the third hands, hands um, Keller Brimbron a piece of the mithril, and he's about to put it in, but you see Anatar takes it from him, and he puts it in, 
and mm-hmm. I will explain why later on this episode why that is a big deal that he did that. All right, let's let's get to matter of fact. What else? No, nah, let's get to Sauron. So okay, let's talk about Sauron. Right. So so saw so with Sauron, and we see he basically allowed himself to get get captured. Because um at the end of at the end of season one, I, 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 I. we got to go back to show the prequel of Sauron. Oh oh yeah, my my bad my bad my bad because I yo so we got a a, a Sauron origin story. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. So basically, all of this that led up to him before he got on the boat that we saw him yeah. on the raft on the raft in the ocean when um. When he met up with um with Gladriel, so, so so yeah, so you, you want it or no? Nah, it don't matter. It's like so basically at the beginning, he's uh, walking. You know what I'm saying? Like just no, not, like not, I didn't even talk about that. I'm talking about like even they show him like right at the fall of Morgoth. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead, so go ahead, right, go ahead. right, so right, so this is like in the first age, they, and it says it first age of middle earth he is like the fall morgoth who was the who's the real super big bad has been captured or whatever and taken out and it's sauron but he's in another form he looks different and he's talking to all the orcs and there's a dar there with him and he's like look here morgoth has fallen i can do this i was his lieutenant I'm taking over. I'm going to be the new Dark Lord. And you hear the orcs. This is like the first time you see orcs being defiant too, kind of like that. There was like, man, talking and talking in the black speech. Yo, Sauron lies. <laughs> and like, he's like, what y'all say? You're like, man, we ain't trying to hear y'all or whatever like that. And you see a Dar, that dark elf who's there, and he takes the crown that we see. That we know that is the crown that Sauron um, wears when he wears his helmet in the original series. He says, "Hey, man, this is our leader now. We need to just go ahead and follow him." And they're like really upset because they saw because one of the um because one of the orcs also tries to kill Sauron, and Sauron's like, "Yep, yeah, whatever." Kills him in front of all the orcs. So what we see next is Adar is about to crown. Sauron and Sauron builds a knee. He flips the spikes part upside down. Oh, ah! yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah! And he like stabs him. <laughs> and Sauron is trying to fight it off. And he's taking out all, trying to take out all these orcs. And these orcs basically, they pull a Julius Caesar. And they all just start poking them and stabbing them. They had a field day. Et tu brute. Et tu brute. They was just, ah, they were stabbing, kicking. And then next thing you know, you see light shine out of his mouth and poof, and he's supposedly dead. That's why Adar said last season, because they thought he was Sauron at first. He was like, Sauron, man, I killed Sauron years ago. And that's how he became the leader of the orcs, because the orcs were chanting his name, and they picked him to be the leader. However, what you see is the blood that came from the the... I guess you could say the body that was the vessel of Sauron dripping through the cracks of wherever the cave they was in. And it puddles like hundreds of feet down. And basically that blood just starts devouring whatever animal source comes over, I guess, the entire first age. It's like rats, bugs, and then it looks like it turns into a venom symbiote. Just say it. It and, really <laughs> did look like a symbiote. Yeah. And it's like and it's like crawling through the the mount, the little cave and mountain. It gets outside. And then like a lady's drinking her liquor, riding her buggy, and she runs over it and it clings on to the buggy tail. And it devours that woman and then comes out as in um what's Sauron's name? What Hell Hell Heldebrand? Yeah. yeah, Hellburn. Hellburn. It comes out as yeah, Hellburn. Yeah. Hellbrand. And Hellbrand. Hellbrand. Yeah. And Hellbrand. See... Yeah, it's a stupid name. Hellbrand. Yeah. And then you see, like you said, when we when you pick up Rashad, when you see Hellbrand's walking, and you 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 see where it's like people are like, "Yo, where you going, man? Death is that way." And he's like, 
I ain't worried about that. And then go ahead, Rashad. Yeah, because uh, basically, um, I because like you see like a whole like uh like volcano or something in the distance, and it looks like fire and stuff. So mm -hmm. the issue, okay, so Tony, like. The interesting thing with this is that we see that the um, the people who are of smaller stature are coded as the people with the biggest hearts, because this person was definitely was was like a little person in his world, and he was trying to tell him, "Look, yo, you can do other two things. You can go that way to certain death, or you can basically reinvent yourself." You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You got a new beginning. You know what I'm saying? He's mm -hmm. walking. He said, hey, man, if you're trying to come, let's come through. So mm -hmm. he does. And and he sees, he's noticed something. He said, what's that? He said, "That's." Um, he said, are you of like royal lineage? He's like, nah, this is just the um the, the line that I used to serve. of the, Like, you know, the um kings or whatever I used to yeah. serve. Royalty I used to serve. And he was mm -hmm. like, why would you wear that? He said, you know, it's just a reminder that, you know, it doesn't matter how big you are, basically. You still mm -hmm. can fall, which kind of um, was like, was him, of course. So he's mm -hmm. like, ah, okay. And then Sauron being so slick, he clocked that. I was like, all right, yo, got it. Walks with them to a ship, and they own the ship. And then we see this huge, that same sea crocodile whale hybrid thing you know what i'm saying yeah. we see that in the water and, and he's talking to him like hey man you know you you should you should you, 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 you're gonna be all right Joe. you know what I'm saying? it's gonna be all right like the old man is really he's like he's like 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 a, like a deacon at church trying to speak life to the young boy you know what i'm saying hey, uh -huh. hey you know i know i know i know i know it's been rough for you just got for drugs you know what i'm saying you gotta try to get a job you know, it's what you, but god is on the your lord, side the lord is gonna use you <laughs> yeah. you know what i'm saying and then okay Tony. so did so did sauron summon the creature definitely all right that's what i was thinking too because like the creature boom hits this thing and and like everybody's going crazy. The old man gets lodged under like 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 one of the beams, and he was like, "Help me, boy!" And he was like, "Man, give me that. Give me that. <laughs> give me your chain. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> right. so, my, my chain now, punk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. My mama gave me that chain. So um, took took his chain. You know what I'm saying? And then the ship breaks apart more. He's in the water. Mm -hmm. The little beast comes up to him and he's just like just floating in the water, like, yeah, do something. And the beast said, Ah, I know who you are. <laughs> yeah. Swims the other way. And and then we see the scene basically how Galadriel. right after Gladriel um goes off, we see them and the, it's like five of them, like in the water on a raft. And then um, you know, Gladriel comes up and then boom. That's the thing too. So, like, was that voice or that inkling in Galadriel? Was that Sauron who took like because like they was in the same waters, yo? Like, was that Sauron yeah. too? You know what I'm saying? Right. I mean, yeah. Because I mean, I mean it could have. It could have been. Remember going back to in the first season. I think it was like the first second episode. You know, she yeah. was supposed to be going to the undying lands. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she was, was she was like, going to elf no. heaven. You know what I'm saying? It was like, yeah. which looked like a vagina in the sky. When I I, I looked at the um at like the recap, I was like, yo. <laughs> You gotta go to the vagina to get to heaven. That's crazy, yo. <laughs> heaven. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm being serious I mean, now. Yeah, so, okay. <laughs> that was funny. All right. So, because I'm saying, I'm telling you, I'm saying, like, that definitely feels like Sonra was calling out to her to get off of the yeah. boat because he knew. He was going to need an elf. And, mm -hmm. and plus, she was already about the action anyway. She didn't really want to go to um through the vagina to elf heaven anyway. Like, like it was um Elrond was like, look, yo, you take your time, man. You should you should you should you should go. You know what I'm saying? And um, she was mm -hmm. like, Man, I right, yo, begrudgingly. 
So mm -hmm. Sauron gets um he he basically go on his way back to um to 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 you know to Middle Earth, and he is in in, in more more door more like more door. He's this so, Mordor. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry. So we're at the point now where he's escaped. You know, what I'm saying so. The first season happened. He's escaped. He sh um yeah, the first season happened. He escaped and everything like that. And he's on his way to Mordor. And he basically allows himself to get caught yeah. by a dog, uh, dar. orcs, orcs and stuff like that. And they got these humans and, you know, the, the, the southern humans that um he came with or whatever. And he's in like, they, he come face to face with a dog and they're like, hey, you know, blah, blah, blah. y'all got a choice. Y'all can become children of a dog. You know what I'm saying? Basically. Mm -hmm. He down with us or whatnot, and then next thing you know, Sauron as Hildebrand basically says, "Hey, hey, hey, hey," because Adar doesn't know this is him because he's taking another form. He doesn't look like the Sauron when they when they when they when they, when they thought they killed him. He says, "Look here, um, I know who you are, but there's a sorcerer back," and Adar's like. The hell are you talking about? He says Sauron, and he's like, "Man, I killed Sauron." He was like, "Hey, well, there's someone going around saying they Sauron, basically." Blah 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 blah. I can help you find them if you let my people go. <laughs> you hit him with the Moses. Let my people go. You know, let my people go, and I can help you find them. And they basically call BS on him, and they chain <laughs> they chain Sauron up. And basically semi torture, not a whole lot, but you know, don't feed him, keep him locked up or whatever like that. In the process, Sauron befriends like this damn wolf jackal thing of what this big wolf jackal thing or whatever. And um finally a dark, but they don't know this. And a dark comes in, they like, so what you gonna do type thing. And he's like, yo, I pledge to you, my lord. And then Adar's being like a dick about it. He's like, he said, the one guy's like, Neil, and he does. He said, Dar's like, no, put, put your face on my boot and say you Neil, you know what I'm saying? And he's like, and it's funny because I know Sauron's like, I could kill this mofo right now if I yeah, want to. Yeah, yeah. But I have a plan. So he gets all the way face down and says it and like, cool. And they're like, next thing you know, it was like, well, he got to get the brand and stuff, and they go, and they get ready to put the brand on him, and the orc comes back and sees that Hillbrand, Hill, Hill, Hill a.k.a. Sauron, is gone. And also, the chain on that damn pit bull wolf jackal dog thing is off, and he turns and look, <laughs> and that thing basically attacks and kills him, and then he just cuts to a scene of... Uh, Sauron on a horse is just riding, um, you know, say riding away all slow, smiling like, <laughs> I got yeah, away he, from that. Yeah, because he told him, he said, Look, yo, before I leave, I'm gonna kill you. And yeah, he was like, yeah, Man, yeah. what you talking about, yo? You chained up, my dude. You chained up. You're gonna kill me. Not yeah, so he, so, so he, again, so, so like, go ahead. My bad. Like, I just, I think it's, it's just like very indicative of Sauron, is, these whole three episodes mm -hmm. is. Look, I'm in it. Like you said, like I'm, I'm doing, I'm playing a long con with everybody. Very, very and my, my reaction first was like, "Yo, Sauron tricking everybody in this joint." Everybody. Like, he's like he as they say, as they say, he, he, he playing in everybody's face, and they don't even know it, right? That's, now. that's yeah, that's so, what I said. Yeah, so he basically makes it to um, what what. What what kingdom was that? Elgin or something like Elgin or something like where Calibrimbron is the is the lord of that kingdom. Yeah. And he yeah. gets to the gate. He gets to the gate because remember, he worked with Calibrimbron in the first season to create the rings of power for the elves. For the elves, whatever, yeah. For the elves. And they tell Caleb, hey, there's somebody at the front gate for you. You need to um, they want to see you. And he's like, who? And he see who it is. He don't know it's Sauron, but he knows that there's something is strange with this guy, even because, though he works with him. Um, because what you call it, um, Gladrius said, look, don't 
ever work. Don't don't even bring him. Like I ain't messing right. with him no more, yo. Like because she knew at this point that was Siron, but, but she, she didn't say tell. nothing. She was like, she look, ain't yo, say nothing. Just yeah. just don't like don't mess with him. I ain't messing with him no more. He's not a royal. Right. He's not a royal line. Because remember, yeah. episode eight, they had like the the most waterproof scroll ever. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. And then yeah, <laughs> she tried to find out because he. Cause he tried to lie and say, "Oh yeah, this pouch right here, I'm royal lion." Okay, and she saw that thing was like, "Man, this lion been gone for hundreds of years, dude." Like, get yeah. and, and that's when we saw in the um prequel kind of yeah, thing. And, and, and then then Elrond found friend. out, and that's why he pissy uh-huh. mad at her. You know what I'm saying, like, Galadriel? Right. Yeah, yeah, he pissy mad at Galadriel, and he stole the rings of Tony. The Elvis rings of power. So, so Tony, so he sends his messenger girl out there. Do you think? He put the juju on the messenger girl because she was real soft to him. You know what I'm saying? Or just that was I just don't, I like, that was just she, her like her like you know just being like um gregarious because she was like at, at every time he said, like, "Look, hey, it's, it's it's gonna be cold tonight." You know what I'm saying? Or like, yeah. oh man, you know we should really kind of we should help him. And he was like, "Man, shut up, we're not helping him." You know what I'm saying? Like and. Might might have. My, I'm not. I'm not one. Like on like three or four different occasions, like they kept on queuing in yeah. at her, just yeah. being like, "Hey, man, like we should yeah, help that." He was right because he was he, like, "He may be hurt. <laughs> He's hurt. Let's help she him." She was like, "She was like, yeah." They said that you can't be here. And he was like, "Oh, so you want me to leave or whatever?" And she's like, "You ain't say that." He said, "He just don't want to be bothered. <laughs> he can't see you right there." And he was like. I'll wait here. He'll eventually want to see me. And she's like, well, okay. And, and basically, he stood. Sarah, I don't know how many days passed or whatever, but he stood at the same spot or whatnot, waiting. And, and then finally, like, Keller Brimberon looked out there and was like, because ah, it started raining. And he was like, oh, let me go out here and talk to this motherfucker real quick. And he went out there and he's like, look here, dude. Um, yeah, I don't know what you want, but you're not, you're not coming up no more. I'm not working with you, or what you know, whatever. And and it is what it is. And then he was just like, "Who?" He was like, "But uh, did you get worried about the rings?" And he's like, "What you talking about?" Mm-hmm. He was like, "You ain't get worried for the rings, mind you." I want to say this: we know what we saw earlier in the episode. He wasn't around to see what happened with the rings. No, that's what just, I'm saying. Yo, he's he just straight like, up just made it up. Yeah, made it up. And the dude was like, Well, come on upstairs, my guy. He's talking. He's he like, So look here, what happened with the rings? Did they work? And he's like, Yes, they worked. The tree is healed or whatnot. And, and he's like, Oh my God, it did. He says, Look here, man. He was like, Um, the Ladrill and them, you know, they really don't want me to, you know, they, they you want to know why she don't want me to work with you because she don't want she don't want to do this. But hey, we need to help everyone else here in Middle Earth. We need to help them because of what's going on in this Mordor world. Because Mordor is brand new, by the way. It's a new it took out he's like this this we, we need to help these people and we're gonna help the br- dwarves and we're gonna help men. Keller Brimbro said, Hold the hell on, men. All right. <laughs> <laughs> We deal with them, but those, you know, temperamental mofos. Like, they they not you know, really like us for real. You know, know what I'm saying? They're not like, like it was, <laughs> you know, they're not really like us for real. This and that. And that goes into, you know, his plan. Because his plan, you know, is we know from the Lord of the Rings, one ring to control them all. And he's like, look here. It's something I want to tell you, but I'm just, he, it, 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 it is like, and I think he's working some juju on Keller Brimbro on by this point. Look, he's like, he said, it's something I want to say. He says, but you can't. What's wrong? And this is that. He was like, we're friends, right? He's like, yeah, of course we're friends. We, we made magic happen. He was like, okay. You know, there are, you know, forces out here that sometimes help people and bring things along. And he's like, Hello, I was like, hold, <laughs> like, wait, wait, wait. What are you trying to say? Mm-hmm. I, was sent, I was sent here to help you. 
And he's like, wait, so you try to tell me somebody sent you here from some type of higher being? Man, get your tail out of here. Kelly Brimmer was about to be like, man, get the hell out of my thing. I, I was believing you and what that. And yeah, because he because he was it. like, he was like, yo, I can't believe somebody basically from um from elf from elf heaven. Because he basically yeah, something like, uh-huh. yeah, I forgot again. I'm sorry. I don't remember the name of the place where elf heaven. Through through yeah. vagina is I forgot the name of the place, uh, but that's uh, but that's where he said he he, he came from. He was like, man, get out of here, that nonsense. Yeah, like you know the undying lands and stuff. And he's like, man, uh, and he's like, you know what? And he's like, man, get out of here. And then he turns around, and next thing you know, like Sauron makes the doors open and the storm is happening. And he turns around and he's like, hello, hello, Bryn, hello, hello, yo, where the hell is? <laughs> where the hell did Hellebrand, Hellebrand, go? Hellebrand go? And he looking around. And he like the hell Hellebrand, and he looking, and the forge that he uses to build stuff goes out. And the next thing you know, it woo, it comes back on. The flame is bigger than ever, and he's talking to him in a disembodied voice. And he's looking around like, yo, what, like what's going on? And he was like, I was sent here by the bylaw, and this and that, and then he's. You see, Hella, so Hellebrand, we see him. He has like ear length, shaggy hair, brown, dirty looking. Next thing you know, it's like, oh, he's oh. stepping through the fire. Rashad, long, luscious, golden Norwegian locks down his back. And he's, and you see, oh. Exactly right, and he's coming through like, is this? I said he coming through trying to look like, dang on rings of power, Jesus. <laughs> definitely, to- definitely. I'm like, yo, who want to be space users more? The um, the the stranger, the stranger or, 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 or Sauron, Sauron. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. this right here looked like he he looking like behind the um, like like but like we- like no 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 Tony Tony the um, which film studio was that? That has the lady with the and the oh the, uh yeah that's, that's Columbia Columbia Paramount per, yeah yeah Paramount. It's, it's Columbia right <laughs> yeah I think it's Columbia yeah because yeah, Paramount, Paramount just had the stars over the mountain yeah yeah Columbia. but it, but they did too but the cloud stuff right here looks like the lion like lion gates like uh looking like background with the, the shiny clouds and stuff so but you but this is. So for people that don't know, um, Tolkien did use a lot of biblical stuff from here, and Sauron is supposed to be the embodiment of the devil, Lucifer. And it's clear, it's, it's, clearly it's coded exactly as what he what he did. He comes out with long blonde hair, and he's like, "I was brought here as a gift." His voice changed; it's still the same face, but he has the luxurious. And he's like, "I was brought in." as a gift giver and to help you and this and that and the, and like Hellebrand is like oh my, oh my god. god he like falls to his knees he says no you do not need to kneel towards me we are partners this and that and he's yeah, like and then he, what, what's his name um Anadel he said Anatod he was like, uh, yeah, he was like what should, he says what should I call you Anatod and so he said, "Oh, he said, oh, oh, the giver of gifts." I'm like, the yo, giver so, of gifts. Yeah. <laughs> like, yo, when I, yo, I was like, yo, um, <laughs> Keller Burnman is about to is about to sit there and just cuck for him. Like that's how he was so he was so enamored. Like, yeah, like, I, yeah, like, yeah, like he was enamored. He 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 got took to the to the upper room you know yeah, what I'm saying? yeah yeah like, yeah he was like because he like, look look if y'all don't if y'all can't see that hellbrin Anat- anatar is clearly uh, the antichrist like y'all don't yeah. like it's it's right there anyway it's go ahead. right there for it. so you know calibrimbron is like enamored is like all right fine we will do this we are going to Make this happen. In the process of all this going on, they were they've been talking, and and you know that's he also tells them. So yeah, we got to make rings for dwarves, and we got to make rings for men. And then he's like, well, you know, we got to check. And so then this is when he starts to seduce Celebrimbron even more, and he calls mm-hmm. Celebrimbron to fall kind of to the dark side a little bit. He says, look here, 
I, I haven't been really truthful with it. Let me tell you. Galadriel and them don't want me to make no rings. No more rings. They want me to stop. <laughs> I mean, it's it's crazy. And I just want to help. Even the great king, Gild the, the elvish king, Gild, they just want the elvish rings. They don't want anybody else. That, but we need to have this power to prepare people and help people. Kind of remember I was like, no problem. We're going to fix this. <laughs> not, no problem. We're going to fix this. And, 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 and Anatar, a.k.a. Sauron's like, how are you going to fix it? I'm going to write a note to, um, oh, Gilgalad. And it's like, hey, look here. I'm stopping all operations here. I'm going to move in. I'm coming to where you are and everything and this and that. And then he's like, you, you would actually lie to your high king? He was like, man, he ain't about to tell me what to do, what I, what I can and can't do here. So we gonna still do this, but you know, it's just to appease him or whatever. Meanwhile, while this is going on, we told you that the elves got their rings, and Galadriel knows what's going on, and they sent an envoy to kind of warn Celebrimbron about, hey, that dude Hillbrand, that's Sauron. Don't help him whatever we're in the process along the way uh hildebrand i think or his followers uh, uh met up with those people killed them and, and took the dag on snatched them up fast snatched them up killed them message so those people are dead dead and more dead so was they, yeah because you know like was constant was was seemingly because um i'm not sure if you said it or not but um but uh, hellbrand said like yo Back when they was meeting in the rain, it was like, oh, no, nobody, you, you didn't get no messages from, from the king? Right. Mm -hmm. And he the was like, message. the king ain't sent me no message? Because, yeah, because, like, the message got cut off. You know what I'm yeah. saying? In the forest. In, so, in the yeah, forest. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so, Anatar, a.k.a. Sauron, a.k.a. Hillbrand, is basically got um, Hillbrand to basically, like, lie to his great king and do whatever, and they're going to forge these rings anyway. And that's when we get to the part I told you we spoke about earlier with the dwarves. And the reason why he was trying to hurry up and saying, yo, we don't got time to wait for this is because of he know that, yeah, they're going to try to find a way to come. Like Gilgalad, um, Gilgalad they're going to try to come to stop them from happening he says that he just don't know how long it's going to take for that to happen so he needs to hurry up and make these rings in this in this situation so that's kind of like that whole story right there with Sauron he is now Anatar the gift the giver of gifts and he's helping um Celebron Celebron create the, <laughs> I can't, I can't, whatever we both create struggling y'all we struggle right now Create the rings of of power. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Which you know, which is like, oh, okay. I, I see. I see how this how they setting this up to where all the rings and eventually be melting yeah. out to into the one ring. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so who, who's so let's go ahead and talk about the elves. Talk about the elves now. Just oh yeah, yeah, because the elves is because they're quick. not going. Yeah, yeah. Um, go ahead, Rashad. So we're gonna start off with um with with Elrond and um. Yeah, Elrond trying to go to uh, in all of them. Yeah, <laughs> he trying to get rid yeah. of the rings. <laughs> Elrond was like, "Hey, I'm trying to get rid of these rings." So he goes talks uh -huh. to the um. To who, who talks to um? I got his name because I can't remember that dude's name. Hold yeah. on, hold on. And while you're thinking that, just to let y'all just to let y'all know, these are the three El Elvish rings of power that Celebrimbron created. Created with yeah, the help the, of um of help Sauron. of what we know as Sauron, but I yeah wait, he was I'll he was a, he was he was a hell ran at the time, but uh, yeah so right. um so Master Serdan um mm -hmm. he goes he said look yo I gotta find somebody to help me with this and he because he dips he takes the rings you know what I'm saying from mm -hmm. Gladriel and um and and the king and them and they was like look we need to find that bastard ASAP. Uh -huh. So you go find them. And if these and if these rings can help, you need to get the damn rings. You need to get the rings. So, rings so he goes to try to um he said he's gonna seek counsel from somebody that was wise and yada yada yada. So he does go to Master Serdon. So he goes to Master Serdon. He says, Look, he said, and and like, yo, 
if they would just listen to Elrond, this would have been straight. But and and it kind of goes into the lore of how the rings be talking to you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The rings is like the, ring, the rings is like crack, and 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 everybody is 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 like Pookie from Jack City. <laughs> It be calling me, so calling he goes. So he said, "Look, man, um, I got these rings. They are powerful. If we put them on, we may actually help the our realm. But also, we gonna get corrupted. <laughs> it's not gonna be good for any of us. You know what I'm saying? Uh huh. And he's like, ah, oh, man, for real. He said, okay. So there is this essentially this deep crevice." on the other side of, of the river that we can, I can just toss them holes in the water. You know what I'm saying? We'd be good to go. He, and Elrond was like, sir, thank you. Yeah. Burden off my shoulders, because like, I can't do this. So, and your man is like, yo, I don't know where this wind was coming from, because he he didn't have no rose or nothing. He just was like sailing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, he, was just, he was just sitting there like, and just Pushing the dag on both. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Even so before, but even before that happened, though, remember, uh, Gilgalad and Galadriel found figured out where Elrond went. They said, "Yeah, yes, uh, yeah, went. yeah, yeah." And yes. they oh. went to catch up at where he's at, and they see Elrond, and they like, and and Galadriel's like, "Yo, chill, chill, King. Let me go talk to him." Yeah, oh, yeah, God. yeah. One more and chance can, to talk, and I can talk to him, and you know, try to. Because she's trying to get back in his good graces too, the great king or whatever. Be like, yeah. you know, whatever. So they go, she goes in there and he's like, hey man, where are the rings at? We need the rings, this and that. And he's looking at him like, mm. and then she's like, yo, where old dude at? You know, what? what's his name, Rashad? The uh the oh, wise Sir Don. Sir Don. He's like, where's Sir Don at? And she look and she notices the boat is missing. And then that's when we get to the part where Aaron was like yeah, he about yeah, to do like, the job. Yeah, so like, come on, you can kiss the rings goodbye, baby. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. So Sir is out there. He says, Man, all right, I think I'm at my spot. And he goes to put the rings over. Then he was like, was, <laughs> something happened. <laughs> yeah. He's like, hold on, yo. No. Hmm. Let, let, let me let me just take a peek at these rings. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. And he looks at them. And then he's like, hmm. I think I should just um. I, I, I think we should keep these. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and yeah, and it's that, so, that bastard, and then that bastard just rose back. You know what I'm saying? He, yeah, he rose back. So because Gilgalad thinks that you know, damn, we lost the rings, and reminds you, remember in the first season we see that one of the ancient elvish trees of light life and light it was dying it was getting poisoned yeah 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 What's yeah, going yeah, on? yeah yeah he's speaking to the elves of his realm is like look here ah oh, boy the time of the elves here in middle earth is over it's time hey, for we, us to go we're gonna we we go go pack it up pack it up and go to the undying lands you know Man, it sucks, but we got to get up out of here. You see everybody's looking like, oh, man, I don't want to go to the Undying Lands yet type thing. Because once they go to the Undying Lands, they can't come back to Middle Earth anymore. They're done. Next thing you know, your boy, I keep forgetting his name, Rashad, one more time. Serdon. Serdon comes up, walks up, and they look at And then you see Elrond's face like, no, oh. no. My no, God. no, no. And he said, I walks up and he has the ring on his hand. And then you see him kind of like touch the tree. And then the tree starts to heal and light. And then like he drops, he gives one ring to Gilgalad. Gilgalad's looking and he's starting to feel the power. And then the other ring falls out the pouch and rolls towards Galadriel. And then Galadriel takes the ring. And he's like, Elrond's like, no, Galadriel, don't. And she puts it on. And Elrond sees this and is like, I can't do this. I'm out of here. And he just leaves the situation. Leaves. And now they have these rings. And they don't have to leave now because that tree has been healed by all of them. And the reason, and some people are like, why did Galadriel get a ring? Galadriel is like one of the oldest elves 
on Middle Earth. She's two thousand years old, <laughs> so she's been around since when when the when the two great trees were <laughs> were in um that they were still alive and everything, and so you know. They're talking and, you know, saying they're trying to figure out, you know, like even um, Sonora, he's like, hey, man, I really, we don't really fully understand the power of these rings type thing like this. And um, Galadriel's talking. And this is where, this is where what I was been holding out on telling y'all right now, what the problem, what happens here. We know with the rings of power that they harness your powers or whatever. If you remember when those three elvish rings were created, Hild- um, Hildebrand never touched them. Yeah. He was never able to infuse himself, even with the mithril they used to create it, infuse his part of himself into those rings so he can have full control over the elvish rings. However, because it's still some magic that involves him. He has a little power over them, but they're still able to kind of fight it. The elves are still able to fight it off. That's why you saw the scene when Celebrand was trying to put the mithril inside the, um, you know, saying the molding of the dwarf ring. You saw Anatar take it from him. Sauron Anatar take it out of his hand, and he was the one that put it in because he infused some of himself in there. So that's what happens with the dwarf. They always say that the dwarves are always kind of greedy anyway and we've seen that over the time with these rings yeah. of power they're going to become even more greedy you know saying even more greedy in that situation so you know they're there doing this and then Elrond and then so your lad's like hey man we need to um we haven't heard nothing from this envoy that we sent to kill a Grimbron <laughs> we heard nothing from this envoy uh and then she's like yeah let me let me put together a you know what I'm saying a crew to go you know what I'm saying find out what's going on this and that and he's like all right go ahead and she but you got to make sure you got to do this so she says yeah she goes to Elrond and says look man look Elrond look I I, I know I shouldn't have took the rings but hey it's calling me baby it was calling me and look it helped the tree this and that would you come with me he like. Hell no, I ain't coming with you, man. I'm not trying to babysit you. And he said, ain't no telling what's going to happen because, you know, you might end up going and and Siron might snap his fingers or something and you're going to turn on me or whatever. So what ends up happening is Gilgalad basically tells her, all right, I'm going to allow you to go on a thing. And she's like, oh, thank you for letting me do this mission. He's like, no, wait a minute. You're going, but you're not in charge. Elrond's the one that's going to be in charge. Elrond changed his mind, went and said, hey, I'll do this, but I need to be in charge. So that's what you see with them, with the elves, that they have the three ring, elvish rings of power, and now they're trying to go stop whatever Sauron is doing with Celebron, Celebrimbron to, you know, make any more rings um, for that situation. So yeah. that's how that's all connected right there, right, with the story right there. Yeah, which is crazy, man. That was a lot. We got you still got one more party to talk about. The humans. And that's the Numenorians. The Numenorians. <laughs> yeah. The humans being trash people as always. Us humans being trash as always. Uh, I, all right, so let's let's first? let's kind of yeah, we you can start off with um with what you call his son, who is yeah yeah. It, yeah, Isildur mm-hmm. stuck in Middle Earth. So Isildur uh-huh. is he's lost. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Every everybody dead. You know, yeah. His um his horse. His, his horse. His horse finds him. You know what I'm saying? Because they was like, "Look, yo, we got to go back home to Numenor. The horse don't want to come. Just just let's mm-hmm. let him go. You know what I'm saying? So he mm-hmm. finds him. His he father. finds him in this in this like cavernous spider lair and he's wrapped yeah. up in a web and with with a bunch of other like um orcs and stuff and like yo the horse is trying to wake him up he wakes up and it's he's crazy in an entanglement. he's in an entanglement with shot just wanted to say that that's all he is so <laughs> yeah. so uh <laughs> 
he finally gets unentangled. You know what I'm saying? And it's like a pretty decent little like um like little little horror scene, little horror going on. You know what I'm saying? The spiders and the horse is being very resourceful, and he gets out of there. And the funny part is, um, he get, like he gets out of there and gets out of the the black force. What's it called? The, the dark force, black force, wherever it was. The black force. Yeah, because yeah, even the um there was two random orcs. It's like yo, like let the horse go. He gonna die anyway. So they got the forest and he ends up walking up on this little area and we see some dev folks or whatever. And he's walking around just trying to see, you know, you're like, yo, what's the heck happened over here? And then boom, this random black lady comes out and stabs that man in the thigh. You know what I'm saying? Like, and she's like, oh, I thought you were an orc. Like, man, you didn't even look. You know what I'm saying? I don't even look like an yeah. orc. I've been out here grunting and making noises. So uh-huh. she ends up like, you know, end up, you know, dressing his wound a little bit. And they go to this old uh, Numenorian um, settlement. And that's where like a lot of the um, the remaining humans actually are. And um, the funny thing, even before we get there, um, on the way, we see another situation where there's another random person, you know what I'm saying, just on the side. And he's like, hey, man, we should just get that mask some food or something, y'all. So uh-huh. he goes to get his old man a piece of bread and it was an ambush. Yeah, but these are men that are faithful to um Adar. Faithful to Adar, like like everybody got the, the they, the everybody got the mark yeah. of Adar. You know what I'm saying? And everybody's faithful to Adar. Like yo, we we I, oh oh we know who you are. You want to know? You want to know water people? You about to kill you? So uh-huh. out of nowhere, that on arrows. And it's your boy, Aaron, dear. You know what I'm saying? My favorite black elf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Extraordinaire. And like, uh-huh. this is the point of the show where for me is like, yo, I need y'all to do a little more of this. Because his interest was just, it was so extra. Like him like doing that like reverse twisting somersault. Like I was like, <laughs> Wow. I have a, I have a, <laughs> you want to know my, my, my fan theory. This guy's the one that helped train Legolas. Got to. He, 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 he's the one that helped train Legolas for real, because he marks all 10 of them. <laughs> yes. In like 30 <laughs> seconds. Quick. So, so yeah. So they end up because he was like all sad and stuff gathering sticks, which we end up seeing that. It was for Bronwyn because Bronwyn does not um, heal from her wounds. Of course, you know, in real life, the actress uh-huh. didn't return. She was um, basically doing some humanitarian work for yeah. like women in Iran or whatever. So that's what uh-huh. I, I saw. So shout out to her. So, yeah. So she's um, so they end up um, in the story, not recasting in this act, which I, I appreciate. You know why? Yes. Because yes. I would have gotten tired of having um. Brahma's son being a little ho the whole time about his mom getting his cheeks smashed by Aaron Dare. I didn't know him and so annoyed with that. But yeah, but they kill her off in the show too. Mm-hmm. And then um, he's sad. He's like, you know, my baby gone. And, and his son is like, man, you will burn this heifer. Let's get out of here. Oh, Stop did you playing. see? Oh my God, that was so cold, yo. Cause my man, they, it, it was a funeral pyre for her and he was just sitting there mourning and, and my man was about to he had the torch in his hand about to do it. And her son comes in like, yo, that's my mom. Snatches it out of his hand and does it. And I was like, damn, I forgot. I forgot they didn't reconcile at all over, over this. Or whatever. Nah, he, so, yeah. he ain't like him. You know what I'm saying? Because remember, because even though he was the one who um who had the uh, the, 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 the evil hilts and basically set her, set, set the... He was the one to set the events off t- to make Mordor, essentially. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, he's still I he's still, still he's still, still mad about that. That that's his father, but I don't. It's not his dad, dad, yo. That okay. ain't his dad. I don't. I mean, you can. I mean, they may say it later on or something, but like yeah. he, I would have, I would have been told that. But look, yo, like I'm really your dad. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I've been smashing. He even mom. asked him because, like, later on, like they were collecting wood and everything for. For the stuff because mind you, is your daughter is your daughter is still with them and the girl that Isidore picked up, and he's like gathering um like water or whatever, and 
and that kid is with him and and he's like trying to tell him like look here man i know you got like a lot of hate and anger in your heart man he says look here i, I know what you mean he says my my people got wiped out my village and i helped on to that anger and hate man don't do that he says because what he said he says it is a thirst that will never be quenched that you know what I'm saying never be quenched from it and then the kid is like, and I thought at that moment the kid was going to be like, hey, man, you know, we can bond over this or whatever. The kid said, did you know my dad? And he was like, no, me neither. So how about this? Make this the last time that you and me ever speak to each other again. Holler at your boy. I said, oh, will I be damned? Yeah, he said, look, yo. And you ain't my dad, so I need you yeah. to pull out on he, that. I'm... Right, basically, he's like, you ain't my dad. <laughs> Stop trying to act like my dad. My mom is gone. I don't have anybody. Leave me the F alone. Yeah, well, Jesus said the scene, essentially, like, he's at, because um, Isidore sees him at this place where he thinks it's like a fountain. But like he said, no, nah, this is really an aqueduct. He was like, we're supposed to be channeling water all over to everybody's house. The kid was like, man, get the hell out of here. <laughs> no, no, he said, don't know. He was like, they know. He said, what you talking? He said, yeah, this is an old Numenorean. He was like, don't know man make this. He says, they do a Numenor. And he was like, Numenor is so great. Why'd you came here? He says, I thought it was kind of better off of Numenor and I want to see what else is out here. And he's like, I wish I would have stayed my ass over here. Yeah, he right said, he said, they told me Middle Earth was cool too. But <laughs> obviously, they lied. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So. <laughs> So he was like, at, in the conversation, he said, "Hey, you want your horse back?" Yeah, because those band one the, the uh, two bandits got away and they were able yeah. to take his horse. And he um, was like, "Hell yeah, I want my horse. Meet me here tonight. Bring your sword." Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So they get to this. So him and um the girl, so Isidore and the girl that um she was he met, which she's uh-huh. of course going to smash eventually. Um, mm-hmm. they sit by the fire talking, and he they had his kind of heart to heart. Because her story is she's trying to find her fiance, is what she said, right? Like who she's betrothed to. That's her. I don't story, even remember. Right? Yeah. Something like that. That's her story. And they're talking. And I think he kind of invited her to come to Numenor for the most part or whatever. Yeah, and, basically, like you just, you just come through or whatever. You ain't got to stay here. Yeah. And, and like and he, they're having this kind of um, bonding session, uh, trauma bonding of sorts. Right. Yeah, both of definitely. them got dead mamas and his and basically he ain't tell his people that the reason that his mom drowned was because he was being a dumb child and mm-hmm. got wrapped up in the current and, and she saved him and she got wrapped yeah. up in that I guess that's saying riptide R- riptide yeah yeah and um and he's been holding on to that trying to prove trying to do something heroic to basically mm-hmm. make up for the loss of that which is a very Ironious thing to do. I mean, yeah. erroneous. My bad. Very erroneous yeah. to do because that's never gonna. That's not how that works. So, nah. um, young boys in the background listening to how this these stories, and he is just like finally has his moment of catharsis, and it's just boo hoing like, oh my god, yo, like I ain't the only one. I ain't got a damn mama. Yes, uh-huh. yes, yes. You're not the yes. only one. So <laughs> yes, yes you're not. <laughs> like you're not special with that. You know what I'm saying? So come yeah. on, yo. So uh-huh. they end up going to the. But you saw what happened right next. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh my bad. I'm sorry. So your girl, she, hey, she, she's trying to be. She's a survivor because she was like, look. Yes, I do too. Um, <laughs> pledge my allegiance to Adar because she had the mark on the back of her neck. Uh huh. And then she was, she had, was doing. She had his knife. And she was like playing, had a knife in the fire. Cause she's, yo, she, yo, this little scared the hell out of her at the beginning. Yeah. Oh, he's doing, he's doing, uh-huh. oh. So she takes that so she, knife yeah. and then puts it over the Adar brand to make just uh-huh. like a huge, nasty scar in the back of her neck. Like, yo, they were just branding people anywhere. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's yeah. no rhyme or reason about it, but you know. Mm-hmm. They're so yeah, she basically was like, "Yeah, a dog, my ass." Yeah, <laughs> she yeah, burnt, yeah. And she like kind of burnt that thing in. So yeah, go over um, to this encampment where this horse is, and um, he's like trying to figure out how to get over there, and he creates a diversion for him, which is really ballsy and a very stupid yeah. thing to do. He's very, like, hey. "I was like, this kid's a dumbass," but go ahead. He's like, "Hey, man." 
Can I get something to eat? <laughs> it's like, yo, nigga, who are you? <laughs> you see, you probably for another little. this time of night, boy. You probably for another. You said, look, cause you look well fed. You probably from that town over there. He said, no, I'm one of y'all. He said, bro, this is not an Adar brand. Like well, this like, looks like, like some bite marks or something like this. this looks. This, this, like he this. said, hey, you ain't really one of us. He said, yes, I am, yo. And then um. During this the whole diversion, they see that they kind of figure out that he ain't one of them. They wrap him up. And then um Isildur is around the back trying to do his best Scooby-Doo to creep away with his horse. Mm-hmm. And then <laughs> people just get snatched up, <laughs> like from above. <laughs> and we and what we saw early, we didn't talk about it, but Adar oh yeah, is yeah, 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 yeah. Adar yeah. is basically trying to build his army back up, or army and stuff back up to go to war. And it's funny because he has a son, looks like a a half elf, half orc son, who has a little baby orc. We finally saw with a woman, female orc, and he was like, "Hey, da- like, yo, dad, I thought you said we ain't got to go to war." And he's like, "Look, man, we're gonna always have to go to war, man." Like. Like we're not gonna be accepted until and, and we gotta until Sauron is dead. We gotta do what we gotta do. And you see that um there's a giant troll that comes over to Adar in his camp, and he's like Adar basically talks to him and is like, Hey, so you got my message? Are you down for this? And that giant troll says, Where the hell is Sauron at? So they're trying to kill Sauron on top uh-huh. of you know what I'm saying, on top of the elves are trying to get a hold of Sauron too. And it looks like one of those trolls snatched up um little um emo attitude boy <laughs> at the end. And that's kind of like the end of the the human art with Isidore. And if Isidore like hears the commotion, and I don't know if he goes back to help. We'll probably find that out in the next episode. Now yeah. we get to New I gotta Elf. Show, I gotta show this thing, yo. This thing yeah, is that ugly. thing, yeah, ugly. Yeah, that thing is hideous. Got the the got the bay got the bay yang right there, little hey, bay <laughs> <laughs> got the bay yang got, got the, the bay yang got the bay yang what the hell you guys uh, hey, it is looking it is looking like sloth hey you guys uh, hey you guys where's Siron at <laughs> uh, All right, oh that, that thing is hideous looking yo that is funny so, Let's get to a kingdom that I probably would have loved to live in, which is Numenor. Yeah, Numenor, like, I think that's, like, the prettiest place. Like, yeah, everybody's, like, yeah. fairly attractive. It's Hell super yeah. clean. <laughs> like, it's yeah, oh, clean. Tony, Tony. Why does this feel like the coup, the coup of the whites? Boy, I was thinking the same thing. All right, <laughs> Let's get into let's get into it real quick. Um, I got to get her name right. Uh, Muriel. So yeah, we get to, yeah. So we're at we're at we're at um at Numenor. Muriel, um, who was the princess or whatever, she's still blind from you know from the first season. Her father has passed away, and now it's like she is next in line to be. You know, what I'm saying the ruler, which is the queen, which mm-hmm. would be key to queen, because they started referring her as the queen consort. And of course, we know that she has her cousin, which is uh Farazan, who, like most men, think they belong on the throne because he's the the male heir. He's he's the male or whatever. Oh. He has a fancy. Yeah, he has fancy. Jack Black was pissing me off, yo. Fancy Jack, yeah, fancy looking Jack Black, and then he also has a little punk ass son, <laughs> and punk ass son. I got, I got a girlfriend or whatever too. They are plotting the entire time to kind of like usurp her and to take, you know, what I'm saying to become the king, and he's trying to get people on her on his side. And the one thing that he has going for him is the fact that. When Mordor was created because of the the sword hilt, the, the sword hilt key, they lost a lot of their. They lost a lot of um, Numenorians. Oh yeah, and a lot of people. They died. lost a lot of Numenorians, and the problem with the Numenorians are the one thing I, I don't like about they are extremely arrogant, and the reason why they are arrogant is because in the first age they helped the um 
they help like the the elves and the Valar go up against Morgoth. And because of that, their people were blessed to to have like a long life because most humans die what at the age 89, 9, 89, 90, whatever like that. And these people are been blessed with extended lives. So they can live up to like about 200 years old, 200 years old now, whatever. So they've got to the point now where they're like, well, we've done all this stuff without the elves. They put, as my, as my mom used to say, oh, you forgot where you came from. You know, so you act like you forgot where you came from and who put you on. And basically they forgot who put them on. So they like, we don't need no help from them elves. We ain't trying to help no elves. They're being real disrespectful. So, yeah, Fa- Farazan and them are trying to, you know, put up a cute. And the thing is, that's bold. They are ballsy, Rashad, because they are, they doing this out in public, in like a pub, out in public, talking loud. And you got soldiers who are loyal to the queen. That's also Izzy Doors' boy, homeboy. Look at, uh, you know what I'm saying? He came over there and was like, what the hell you say? It did. He snatched up, he snatched up, dude, son. He's, he said, you talking about my daddy? He said, he said, I'm talking about your daddy and I'm talking about you. The queen was, yeah, my man right there. He was like, the queen was out there on the battlefield with me, Jack. I'm not trying to hear none of this issue talking. Yo, he Whatever. hold this boy so fa- so he hold, bad. He said, if, he said, if I hear anything again like this, it's going to be a problem. Do you understand me, basically? And the dude was like, oh, all right, cool. So, Isidore's father is like the like basically the right hand for the queen. She's helping her, helping her, you know, see and stuff like that because she can't see. She she always asks him, "What do your eyes see?" And he's telling her. And they're at the funeral for her father, and he's like, and she's like, "What do your eyes see?" And he's like, "I see people from the kingdom of the north here." Farazan is there. He's like, he's shaking hands. He was like, "Yeah, this ain't looking too good. We need to go ahead and you know." get this coronation going or whatever. This woman then walks up and is like <sighs> queen consort and slaps the piss out of the I was her like, king's yo. her queen's guard need to be fired. No way in hell person should have got that close anyway to her. Smack the pit. They was trying to get her and she said no stop. She started politicking. Look here. And she was like you lost somebody too. What who you lose? She said, I lost my son. And she's like, I am sorry. Your son died. And she's hugging her. And like, you see Farazan looking like, oh, so there is dissension among the ranks. However, damn well played, young lady. You know what I'm saying? You're trying to sympathize with them or that. So um Farrah, so so they show her back in her chambers, her father's chamber, and she's looking for this bracelet. And this is bracelet that opens up the secret door, and that's the door that has that Palantir sphere that she yeah. uses, she uses or whatever. And the only other person that knows about it is the chick that's like um, Farazan's like um, son's girlfriend or whatever she yeah. is, or whatever to them or whatever. And Farazan walks in and is like. Hey, what you trying to hide from me? And she puts around like, "What you talking about? I ain't got none in my hand." And she's like, "Oh, we gotta pick a color for your um for your coronation." And she's like, "I got a red, crimson here, or else white." And she's like, "Yo, my father used to always wear white." And he was like, "Hey, you want to switch things up and you want to go your way?" And this, and he's real creepy with her. Like, he's like kind of incestuously creepy, you know, saying with her, and she catches those vibes too. And she's like, no, this ain't gonna be this. And then she was like, he was like, yeah, you know, things ain't looking nice. And she's like, look, you never know, an eagle may show up. And he's like, oh, if one of the great eagles show up to the coronation, that would be an auspicious occasion. You know, it's an auspicious occasion that happened. Yeah, like essentially, so, like they were saying, basically, uh, if the eagle shows up, you know, it's like a, it's like a major thing, which is like, like a know. major omen. Yeah. 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 Whatever. Yeah. So, um, so after he leaves, she goes into the room. She fumbles her way and finds, goes into her little secret room. And she finds that that, that Palantir sphere is missing. In the meantime, the same chick that's the girlfriend has said, I have a secret for, about the queen. And 
this is a damning secret type thing. And it's the day of the coronation. So Uh huh. she comes out. She looks marvelous, by the way, in that all white and everything. Or oh, whatever. Um, the queen looks cute anyway, by the way. And they're like, you know, going through the thing. And then someone yells out, like, what, false queen or something like. Yeah, the, the queen lies. The queen lies. And like the, the high priest is like, hey, yo, no one talks during this except for the queen. And you see um, Isidore's father trying to find out who says it. And you see Farzan sitting there looking and he's wearing the crimson like, yeah. And next thing you know, um, the girlfriend comes out and she's like, the queen is a liar. She Our people died because not because of her wisdom, because of this. It shows the color. This right, and they like snap. You use something of elvish magic because I told you yeah, they because they, they, like, hate, they hate the they elves. hate they hate <laughs> the elves now. Like I said, but the elves put y'all on. Let's stop being disrespectful. Yeah, and and they're like no, blah 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 blah. And then she's like, yeah, that's mine. And they start like chanting at her, telling her she's a liar, she's horrible, all this. And you see Isidore's father try to pick up the penalty, and he gets flung back from the power. The uh, He gets flung back from the power from it. And everyone is chanting, false queen, fake queen, liar, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and they're trying to, like, basically mob her. It was It's like a mini, mini riot pops off. Next thing you know, one of the great eagles show up. Flies like on the perch, comes there, and I was like, okay, maybe this is going to help her out. <sighs> no, he walks up to the eagle, Therazon, and the eagle, and I was in my mind, I was like, I hope that eagle like drags that dude and drops his ass from off the thing. But no, he the eagle just sitting there and he turns around and they start, and everyone's still there looking. And what turned the tide in Therazon's favor was his homeboy was just like. Farazan, Farazan, just started chanting, yeah. and then and then like the sheep that they were, they started yay, Farazan, Farazan, Farazan. He and he and he did the um, he did the Aegon the magnanimous thing. He pulled the sword out and threw it up in the air. If Richard shot like from Game of Thrones, it threw the sword up in the air like yeah, like that. And she knew from that point forward, yeah, this yeah, this this, this clown right here. <laughs> She knew from that point forward, even though she couldn't see it, she knew. Like, <laughs> Yo, she felt that for real. It's like, look, it's it's, that, it's like, a wrap for me. Yeah, it's 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 a wrap, and this guy's her cousin, apparently. And, yeah, yeah. And it, it's a it's a wrap, and she knows that she is not going to be the queen of Numenor. And this right here, this is one of the big things that happened. I I know of from what I've read through Cliff Notes and stuff like that in the books that kind of starts the fall of the Numenor, the Numenorian race or what that. So that is, ladies and gentlemen, the first three episode full recap of Rings of Power. I know this is a long episode. Yeah, man, but it's... We had to get through three episodes. They it was about episodes. two hours and 50 minutes of television. So yeah, this yeah. was definitely a long one. Um, definitely, if you haven't, if you say this long, God bless you, yo. Like yeah. you're an MVP. We appreciate you. Yeah. Even if you had on 2X, it don't matter. Either way, come back. We'll be back next week, next Thursday. Mm-hmm. He's dropping on Thursdays. And yeah. since only one episode, we can drop on every Thursday. Yeah. And um, so this ends his final episodes left <clears throat> in three weeks. We have um the the start of of, of the MCU joint with um with our favorite witch. <laughs> oh, and don't forget Agatha all have, along. And we also have the penguin. And the penguin the next day. So yeah, we're about to be busy out here. We're gonna have the um we'll we'll figure out the schedule yeah for stuff when that stuff comes up. But yeah, but definitely stay tuned, stay on us. Um pause, stay with us rather. Um definitely um TikTok, IG FB for nasty. And if you want a Twitter alternative, threads. Like threads. Be just be forgetting to post on threads. Definitely yeah. get on threads. Follow us. Yeah. And we gonna have it's way more conversational stuff. It's better, it's a lot easier to have a conversation on threads. 
than it is to have on like on IG, and and it's not as crazy as like YouTube yet. So definitely join us on Threads, yeah. and um and yeah, that's really all we got for this. Man, you got anything else? Uh, no, man. I just want to say, you know, um, I'm excited for this. I'm a big, I'm a fan of the Lord of the Rings saga. I'm glad that there is a good portion of people that are watching this, and um, I, like Rashad, man, we're gonna have fun like we normally do in the stuff you know, stuff we do it. And, and yeah, I really thought that we did this together, but I guess we no, we did not say I guess, but I, I know we didn't. We got the- I know I was surprised too. I, I really did. So you know, on that, I'm happy here. And once and you know, I always, you know, saying I always shout out my man Rashad here, y'all. Y'all don't know the work that he really does put into this. It is a labor of love of what he does, man. And you know, I just, you know, myself want to thank him for what four years ago now, him approaching to me and just being like hey man we already talk about this let's go ahead and just do this and i was like all right bet i always wanted to do this so you know i shout out to you rashad for you know saying doing this this is yeah what nah. 20 26 years 25 years of friendship Bruh, right a long, very long right time man. Like, very I, long time man for real. i really appreciate you just you know hanging out and just you know dedicating some time man but yeah yeah definitely man because we both have crazy schedules or Crazy schedules. As yeah, as I got my schedule is and everything. So yeah, it's real out here. But I nah, man, um, we appreciate y'all. We'll see you guys next Thursday, hopefully at seven p.m. the The actual at time is going to be a little bit iffy with this, but I, I'm gonna try to have at least around seven, seven thirty, eight o'clock at the latest. But yeah, cool. till next time. Peace out, y'all.